Today I'd like to demo for you my buffer pedal. Now, rather than waste a lot of time explaining whether or not you want to use a buffer or the pros and cons of that, I went ahead and I got a link to an excellent, well-written article that explains the ins and outs of whether or not you need a buffer. In my case, I do use uh, a vintage wah-wah pedal. Now, the problem with an old wah-wah pedal is uh, when you have that sucker plugged in, in between your cables going to the amplifier, and you shut it off, you're not going to use your wah all night. When you shut that sucker off, you're going to really notice that your guitar doesn't sound quite as good. It's missing some of the brightness and the sparkle. You know, if you were to unplug all those ex the extra cable and just go straight into your amp and then compare it to an AV comparison, you would definitely hear. And they call that tone suckage. Because the guitar is still connected to the wah-wah, even when it's bypassed. The way they did it back then, they really didn't, they weren't thinking clearly for some reason. And if you use a lot of pedals, uh, all those jacks with the cables going in between them all, for every one of those, you're going to lose a little bit more. A long cable, you figure, you know, you could use a plumbing analogy. If you had a, let's say you had a 50 foot long pipe, uh, you know, let's say it's uh, one inch diameter and you've got water going through it with, uh, we'll say, five pounds of foot pressure at the beginning of that pipe. Well, at the end, it's going to be significantly less pressure than the five you started out with simply because of physics and that's the way things work in our universe even with electricity and electronics. So if you, you know, you, if you don't use a lot of pedals and you, a lot of the, most of the newer pedals have these circuits built into them, but if you have vintage pedals or you use a lot, the idea behind this is it's, it's a miniature amplifier that's just going to compensate just enough to balance out your signal, to keep it pure and clean through the entire chain and no matter what you run it through. And I had saw an example of this um, at an FX convention where they chained together over a hundred, I believe it was around 130 pedals with a single buffer. And then they did an A-B test where they, they just plugged a cable in and sure enough, you know, nobody could tell the difference, kind of a Pepsi challenge. So being a real simple circuit and me starting out, I wanted to acclimate myself to getting, transferring the, just the working circuit into the box and getting a feel for the jacks and the paint job. I, I started off with this as a simple starter project. You can see I use what's called a swirl paint job for this. Uh, it's acrylic paint that you can get at Walmart. It's about a buck for a little bottle. I use gray, green, and yellow. And you drop it on there. You, you mix it with a little water. You go about three-quarter paint to one-quarter water for the mixture. And then you kind of put little droplets all around there and you angle it around to get it to swirl together. Maybe use a little toothpick action and then you, you dry it. Spray it with some clear coat and you're good to go. And I mean, it was it was nice because uh, there's no fumes with the acrylic paint, unlike spray paint. I did use a little toaster oven to aid in speeding the drying process. But um, I can give you a look inside this sucker. It's it's a real simple circuit. Um, there's a site, AMZ, Jack Orman has a site, and he actually sells circuit boards. So I, I would recommend if if that's a much simpler way to go than ordering the Vero online and then having to mess with that. Uh, but if you're comfortable with Vero, I, I also will I'll show you a quick link of the diagram. You could go ahead and Google simple JFET buffer if you're interested in making one of these suckers. But you can see it's it's a smaller circuit board. It's a J201 transistor. Pretty simple uh, pin out there. Don't get those mixed up. It's just a handful of resistors and capacitors, the input and the output, and you know, with the capacitors on the on the input capacitor, that kind of sets the tone for this. And so, what I went ahead and did, I, I installed a switch with two capacitors, so I could choose from the normal, more full range sound uh, with a slightly larger capacitor and then a smaller capacitor. When you hit that switch it kills a little bit of the, it does not allow uh, a little bit of the bass frequency to pass through so it simulates a little bit brightness and I found if you do if you're running into any hum with the fluorescent lights and the monitor in here and you hit that switch to the treble mode it does quiet up that uh, the little buzz I was getting significantly. So um, I have links posted up here I'd encourage anybody this is a great starter project uh, runs off 9 volts. You could very easily use a bigger 
chassis and put a battery in it. These are actually recommended to run off batteries because the part is such a low drain. Um, supposedly you're more susceptible to noise if you use power supplies unless you really know what you're doing and have the good filtered ones like a one spot or something like that. Um, don't, you don't necessarily need a switch or a volume control. I had messed around putting a volume in here. It didn't do anything. Uh, but you can't tell a difference if you wire up uh, long cables and a wah-wah and you don't use this. Definitely does. And it'll be interesting to see. I can imagine with some of the older pedals with some fuzzes like a fuzz face or I have a Maestro FZ1 like the really ancient, ancient fuzz pedal. What happens when you run this sucker before it or after it? I know there's a lot of guys that they, they say, you know, you can't do it that way or this pedal doesn't have a buffer so you have to run it in the beginning of your chain. Well, it'll be interesting to see. You know, and I also I suppose if you're going to, this is an always on device, you could you could opt to, to use a, a compressor or something like that at the beginning of the chain. You might not need one of these, but for a starter project, low parts count, cheap. I used a plastic chassis. I thought this was a fantastic project. I really enjoyed myself and had a lot of fun doing it. So I have to admit, I kind of am taking the easy way out. I mean, I could have set up a bunch of long cables and wah wah and my old Electron Harmonix pedals and then done like an A, B and tried to show you that it cleans up the signal. But this test is really low rent. I'm just going to show you that it's it's plugged in and it works. It's it's quiet. Uh, give you an idea that it, it really isn't changing the tone. <laughs> with the buffer bypass. I mean you're really not going to hear much of a difference here. Uh, it's pretty short cable runs and that's the only thing that plugs in. That's the only thing that's plugged into the signal chain. Um, I did take a quick look and see if that J201, that's the active the transistor that's in the circuit. I did take a quick look to see if that was available at Radio Shack and unfortunately, and I don't know why they don't carry that. It's uh, kind of a real common JFET that you, you see it pops up a lot on this type of stuff. You can get an NTE substitute, which a lot of guys, they don't care for NTE. I have used them before. You can go to Fry's Electronics if you have one of those locally, if you don't really want to order. Uh, otherwise, I would recommend Small Bear Electronics. Uh, he's a fantastic resource for the pedal building community. Or you could be cheap and go with like FutureLec and wait six months for your parts, or maybe Tata. You know, but it's good to support the American guys, the little guys, so small bear is highly recommended. Uh, unless you have another source to get a J201, J201 locally. The Fry's NTE imitation J201 is called an NTE 458. So you can look for those. Uh, if you're interested in building one of these, I'm going to have to fix my creaky chair. And I got a bunch more videos coming at you soon. I kind of got ahead of myself. I built a bunch of projects and didn't do the videos because, <laughs> well, the thrill is gone. I'm still going to keep making these and look for a lot more uh, quickly in the near future, hopefully. I've got some exciting stuff coming up. The quality of my pedals is going to gonna be more interesting. I don't know about the quality. I got a couple more cool amps. I got a real cheap hack amp that uses a uh, circuit bent Hannah Montana Echo that's cool, like a super thrift sale thing that I put together super cheap that sounds good. And then I got this other crazy thing that I spent a little bit of money on, but it's it's by far the coolest thing for guitar that I've ever put together. And I'm, I'm really excited about that. So stay tuned, and thanks again for watching. I'd like to thank everybody at... DIY stomp box, do it yourself stomp box, uh, General Guitar Gadgets, AMZ, Jack Orman, RG Keen, uh, Paul, PRR, uh, all the guys that know way more than me, uh, Pink Jimmy Photon, all you guys, I read, I read your posts every day and I really appreciate all your work and helping me out. So I'm trying to give a little bit back with these videos and sorry if I ramble on too long. Keep on hacking.